his humanity in trouble. It's urgent. Earth will be here, but we may not be here. And if we keep on this hierarchical that human beings are supreme, then that's the destruction that happens because some of the death that's happening of species and, and of human beings and all the horrible wars, climate change, and the separateness is killing us. The human beings have forgotten how we are connected. If you have any doubt that what I'm about to do, say, think is going to be a benefit for all of us, then pause. Everything that we have comes from all this hoop of life, from the water, the earth, the plant. Use these gifts. You will know how to be in harmony and balance within yourself and with every being in the hoop of life. One of the things that gives me a great deal of, of hope is that I'm seeing Are you ready to shine? Shine bright. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted indigenous wisdom for a challenging, I'll put that in quotes, challenging age, then do we have the Dr. Anita Sanchez Four Sacred Gifts show for you. Today, I'll be talking with Dr. Anita Sanchez, Nahua or Aztec and Mexican-American, a consultant, trainer, coach, and speaker for Fortune 500 companies. And for decades, she's been a bridge of indigenous wisdom and science and the author of seven beautiful books, including the international award-winning books, The Four Sacred Gifts, Indigenous Wisdom for Modern Times. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about indigenous wisdom for these challenging times. So welcome back to the show, Anita. Are you ready to shine? I'm sure ready every day. <laughs> Woohoo! Yes. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so glad we're getting to catch up. I believe it's been about four years. So forgive me for starting this way. Anita, is humanity in trouble? It's urgent. It's urgent. And why, why I won't answer in terms of in trouble? Because we have everything we need. We have nature. We have everything we need. We do nothing alone. However, if we act as if we don't have everything we need and keep on the path of consuming too much, um, you know, individual eyes, everything. So this is competition, no collaboration. Then what we're seeing, not only indigenous people have been saying it for some time, but now science is also saying it, you know, uh, tipping point or whatever language they use is that we may not be here. Earth will be here, but um, we may not be here. And yes, so it's urgent times. Based on the prophecies, and we're going to get into a, a, a bit, we're going to talk a lot of prophecies today, but based on the prophecies, would you say that this is the winter of humanity right now? Yeah, there are some prophecies that talk about this time um, because we go by seasons and it can go, you know, by 500 year blocks of time too, um, that it is winter time and at winter time, it's, it's a good season. We need all the seasons, but at winter time is where you go internal and you reflect and you do the cleansing and cleaning and everything that needs to be done. Because what we do know is that what is happening out here in the larger world outside of you is a reflection of you, of us. And so as we clear and clean and slow down, because it's no longer any decision is better than none, we've done that for too long. Instead, decisions have to be made on behalf of not only oneself, but of the larger community of people and all the other species, not only for now, but for future generations. So we have to do it with a consciousness coming out of place of invested in our development, our growing our awareness so that the action comes out of that instead of more of the overly consumptive, don't have enough, 
all of those kinds of things. Thank you. Well, that takes us back. We're going to talk, like I said, a lot of prophecies here today, but there was a prophecy, I believe it was in the mid nineties, a prophecy that you heard for these sacred times. Can you share that with us? Yes. It's called the four sacred gifts. Uh, it's actually the Eagle hoop prophecy. Um, and my book is named after, but it's, it's based on the Eagle hoop prophecy. And in that prophecy, uh, um, Mohican elder had a dream, a vision. It was more than a dream. It was a vision. And in that vision, spirit was telling him, you, this is time. We're, we're entering really long winter time. And that it's time we're entering this is not in a good way because the people, the human beings have forgotten how we are connected, how we are one, not only with ourselves, with each other and all other species, spirit, earth, everything. So that in this prophecy, they told him to invite elders from all over the world, because this doesn't belong to any one people. It's not US centric. It's about all of us. And 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 pray in that and build this eagle hoop. And in that eagle hoop, which has a hundred eagle feathers, they put four gifts. And just even how he got the hundred eagle feathers is a major story in itself, because one doesn't just come up with a hundred eagle feathers, but things happen when you're aligned with spirit, when the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual are aligned, things do happen. And that's what I'm that's what I'm hopeful for, and that's what I'm seeing. What does the prophecy mean for our future? Saying that we step forward, assuming that we actually make these important changes. Are we entering, are we going through this to uh, to birth a new humanity, to birth a new way of being for, we'll say the two-leggers and the four-leggers and all of the leggers living together as one? Yes. And the problems aren't with the other <laughs> legged, winged ones, creepy crawlies, and even the elements. The issue is with the two-leggers, with us, what we call human beings. And... Um, and so it is about us shifting to become aware and the remembering, because I way, way back, I mean, I'm indigenous, but and at some far way back, well, everyone was indigenous and they understood that we, our survival is this in reciprocity with the earth, the water, our very survival. And that even the animals that we ate, you know, we, we had a relationship and so it was a blessed relationship, and we thank them for, for giving us uh, sustenance, just as we do the plants and other things. That prophecy was talk is talking about this time, and it's been going on for a while. That's why the prophecy came in 94, uh, when 27 elders from around the world came together and, and put those um, sacred gifts into the hoop that Spirit said, use these gifts, and the promise is, you will remember you will know how to be in harmony and balance within yourself, with other two-leggeds, and with every being in the hoop of life. And that will serve not only us in this hoop right now, but future generations. Thank you. And we're going to dive more into the four sacred gifts later on. There's an expression, and um, <laughs> it's not a very kind one, at least in, in, in indigenous circles, but it seems appropriate right now. You're acting as if you have no relations. Yeah. And that you can see me uh, like backing up. <laughs> I'm, I'm so I, sorry. I, no, no, no. I, was, I was giving no, it away. I know. I no, saying. it is. And I think I, I think I put that in my book. Um, I said the worst thing that you could say to a human being from an indigenous perspective is exactly what you said. And what that means, if you're acting as if you have no relatives, is that we're coming out of this mindset this belief that affects our actions, that we it is all about us, that we're the only thing. We might expand that a little bit to our immediate family, but that is just not true. Everything that we have is comes from all this hoop of life, from the water, the earth, the plants, the birds, the the animals that we eat and animals that we just love. The, you know, it's all of this. And if we keep on this hierarchical that human beings are supreme, then that's the destruction that happens. And we don't operate in reciprocity. You know, I give, goes back and forth and we know when enough is enough. That's the shift that we're, we've been um, hoping that the larger society would get. And now more and more, um, you know, environmentalists, scientists, 
Um, some people who, who uh, I will say really conservative and very much about, it's about how much we can make and that's how successes are, are realizing, wait a minute, I love my children and my grandchildren. And I love a lot of the animals. I love this earth. Oh my gosh, I better get going in terms of changing my actions. So only way to do that consistently is to change what's internal to you. Change that mindset of I'm the only. Change in your heart how you how you make decisions. So that means uh, being really clear of the impact. If this decision is going to help me and other beings, all other beings, even seven generations out, then move forward. If you have any doubt that what I'm about to do, say, think is going to be a benefit for all of us, then pause. It's like putting the car in neutral. Do not go forward because we've been doing that and we cause more destruction of species, of the earth, um, and of one another with all the other chaos that's going on across race, and gender, um, orientation. I mean, just we can go on and on. Um, but, and what makes me up every day is that I know that there are a number of prophecies that give us some of the knowledge of how we move through these times. And that I have found from experience, my experience, but also hearing from other people who I work with, uh, they come back and say, oh my gosh, why didn't I know this before? I said, but reframe that. And they go, you're right. I did know these things. I knew them, when I, but then I forgot them because I was being told different. Thank you. Let's let's go there because I can hear people in the back of my mind going, well, that's going to take big people and big power and big this to make big change. Can you share with us one of these prophecies that empowers us and helps us to make this change? That actually in different parts of the world, they have a similar version of this, which is yeah. basically, you know, uh, hardships, this isn't the first time. This is at a magnitude bigger than we've ever had, but we've had hardship. And when we as uh, indigenous people were like, oh, how could this be? How could it be worse? People are dying. They're destroying the land. And spirit said, as we do our ceremonies, yes, remember, sing your songs, do your dance, be in ceremony and be in community. And then more horrible things have come because this is a, a, a prophecy that's gone on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years that we, uh, we got th things got even worse and something else was happening. And spirit said, sing your songs, do your dance, be in ceremony and be in community. And when we break that down, that's telling us how we move through this time, which is connected to what we said before, but it does tell us in kind of a joyous way um, because some of the death that's happening of species and, and of human beings and all the horrible wars, 35 of them around the world right now. And that doesn't even time um, talking about the climate change uh, refugees. This is talking about just what we call wars. You know, this is, this should be unthinkable. And if we were singing our songs, doing our dance, being in ceremony and in community, then we wouldn't do these things. And we'd have the collective to help, to be a part of that movement. I'm going to say something very naive here. <laughs> it sounds like going back to being a child again in the most beautiful way. In some ways it is. You know, um, I do I do therapy too, and I do um, tra trauma release and all kinds of things. And oftentimes in different methods, they think, well, you can bring in the adult person because they're going to be more mature and aware and they can help us with where we're at. And that can happen. But what I find more often, it's going back to the very innocence. Now, some I will, I will own that some children have had hardship from the start. However, they were close to the sacred. They were coming into this world. So what I found is that, yes, like being kind to people, the stuff we learned in kindergarten, we learned at home before that, hopefully, uh, that if you did those things, then we wouldn't be having what's happening. So it's not big science, big corporate, uh, but it's that all of us have the opportunity to change things because we need to be 
the the change as they talk about that we need to be the change that we want to see. It won't work otherwise because we will be doing those actions that are coming out of, uh, no, you, if you get yours and I won't get mine and all these other kind of things that happen. Thank you. There's there's a term epigenetics, which means to express genes or express what are called habit uh, habitable genes, things that come from the past. And I've been looking at the energy flows, the energy patterns that come from the past. I'm calling it epigenetic, which means that we are flipping on and expressing energetic patterns inside of us. And it seems to me that we have, like, for instance, we have tribal patterns, we have world patterns, we have all these different patterns, but we also have patterns of pure goodness that we get to find a way to express those patterns on a daily basis. And then that has a ripple effect out through all of us. I, I absolutely believe that. And that can come out of joy because to be a human being is like, oh, this is just, a no, <laughs> we're meant to be, have joy and Aztec um, uh, tradition, which is one of mine, um, we were taught from the very early that this is a joyful presence. Even when you have hardship, this is joyful. Thank you for the hurt because there's something here I'm going to learn. But it's yeah. also responsibility that was always put together. And what we with that prophecy, it's saying both because it's saying not only the joy of dance and ceremony, but it's also saying being community, even with those that you may not feel akin to. It doesn't mean you have to have them right up front row in your life, but you also don't send them negative energy because that is what this is about. We have to, what you're talking about, those patterns, those coming out of it with love and care, corporate world, we don't say love much, but I do, that four letter word comes out. It is at least care, that you care for this person. Oh my like, gosh, it's just, uh, it's really critical. And then out in the communities, we see that. But uh, one of the things that gives me a great deal of, of hope is that I'm seeing uh, in the prophecies, we are to come together and share our medicine. Uh, right now we're doing it between indigenous people and that's been happening for some time all over the world. And we have big- Tell me more about that. Yeah, well, for example, uh, example um, uh, the in Colombia, 115 <laughs> tribal leaders, two years ago, a year and a half ago now, uh, came together, they were in ceremony that, and in that they heard from us, it's like, no, call out. You know, everyone has this little bit of this prophet, but it is time for us at the same time out of our traditions, do the ceremony, to talk about, do the relationship to Mother Earth, be in gratitude, all those things. And that has been happening for full moon. Every, I mean, every month on moon, um, there have been people, elders all over the world coming together virtually on Zoom. But now the Kogi have also said, uh, it is not, only, it's really urgent. Like this is, we have to. And so in June, I know there's huge gatherings happening all over the world, but being able to put out that frequency, which is here, but two legs aren't looking at it, So they need to remember, which is collaboration, care, understanding. We may feel lonely. That's a human condition, but we are not alone. We are not alone in any way. And when you have that feeling when you know that truth, that everything that you have, including breath, because you try holding your breath, you're in trouble, yeah. right? You can't hold it for too long. But that, that's, Everyone you know, that's my body. Oh, <laughs> that's me doing it. Hey, hey, listen, we put out the carbon. Our plant relatives give us the oxygen. There's a reciprocity. And if we destroy all of that, then what are we doing? We're getting polluted air. We're not having clean oxygen. I mean, it's just, it's devastating. So we, that whole way of being, knowing that we are all energy and that energy is meant to be good medicine instead of bad medicine. That's how we talk about it. I'm not talking about pharmaceutical right now. Um, I'm not saying don't stop taking your medicine that you, you need to do what, but what this means is that good medicine is anyone or anything, any being that creates alignment at the spiritual, physical, emotional, intellectual, that whole whole circle. And bad medicine is anyone or anything, any being that takes that out of alignment. And what we're experiencing in this thing is that those remembering, those who have not forgotten, moving that energy into the, what you call the new humanity. I think it's, you could talk about the old humanity, the new humanity. It's who we really are. Um, but we still have the rip, the, the strong parts that are saying, oh no, 
oh no, uh, no, I have to, we need, and now it's being used, oh, I'm going to go off on something, but technology. So I've been listening to rights of nature and stuff. And um, we, I love technology. I'm not going to give up my computer. I'm not going to give up my phone. I'm, that's how we, and we can connect people all over the world. So I get to do ceremony with people from South Africa and New Zealand, all those kinds of things. However, there are certain minerals that are needed for this technology. And if it keeps being, well, it's just more and more and more, rather than what is really needed and how effective. So we don't have to stop our minds from development. And we're not talking about that. However, most of those minerals, a lot of them are, guess what? Not by surprise. 80% of the most biodiverse lands that are left on this earth are lands that indigenous people are on. And that's because we were, we are coming from, wait a minute, this is our relative. We are not going to hurt the tree. We're not going to cut them all down. We're not going to pollute the water. We're going to, you know, all these things. So it's really very important for us to understand that connection, that unity. And I dare say that oneness that sometimes makes people bristle. Like, I don't want to be one with that. I don't want to be one. Let me just say, the big thing was when COVID happened, we saw that these little bugs from way on the other side, if you're in the U.S., of the world impacted all the world. And the reality is that is true of everything. We're just not seeing it at that magnitude. So this epigenetic, this is critical, is to understand that. And lots of people are coming, not only indigenous people, many other people as well. Is there a prophecy? Is there an understanding that, um, wow, we're going to go really out there? Although it's not to me, it, 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 it's, it's the reality we live in. We as a, uh, a species or as a civilization of two-leggers, this is a process that's taken place on other planets and other galaxies all around the known universe or universes and beyond. And that it is simply if we choose to make it through, because this I'm sure is not humanity 1.0, 2.0, maybe even 10 or 20.0. We've just forgotten, sort of like the movie Matrix of how many times we've gone around. Mm -hmm. That this is part of the evolution if we choose to take it and to come to the other side, what we're calling the new earth, the new humanity, the new human being. It is part of an evolution. I don't know all the prophecies around the world. There are 6% of the world's population are indigenous. There are many, many prophecies. So, but what I do know is that the indigenous people that I'm aware of, and then those that I just read about, we know that there's spirit, there's something more. And we know that from some of the cosmology that there are relationships. So it's, uh, we don't see that as, oh, whoa, that's too way out there. Talk about could yeah. the other life. And now finally it all catches up. People are starting to look at this where governments are funding money say, whoa, it looks like there is something. Hello. Again, it's all connected. You know, we're not just saying that as this is cute little thing. It's we are. And if we can live from that, there's great joy, freedom in knowing that you have all of this and responsibility. Yeah. And that means it's time to get into the prophecy of the four gifts. When these 27 elders prayed and danced and sing and spoke in their different languages uh, back in 1994, um, they built a fire. The eagle hoop was there with a hundred eagle feathers and spirit told them these four gifts, the promises, if you put those in your heart, in your mind, in your physicality, in your whole being, you will, you will remember how to do this. And so the four gifts are, and I'd like for those listening, unless you're driving a car, don't, don't close your eyes or lower your eyes, but I want you to, you can put your hands on your heart if you want. So just to really give it some time to, to go in there. And so the first gift is the gift of the power to forgive the unforgivable, the gift of the power to forgive the unforgivable. Take that into the ceremonial part of your heart and breathe that in. And as you do that, you're probably thinking about things that you were up before and going, I don't know if I can forgive that one. But let me say, you have the power to forgive the unforgivable. Have you been able to forgive your dad? Yes, I have. I have big time. And so when we talk about that, um, 
you know, he, he was, uh, abused me, uh, for nine years and then he died. He was, he was murdered. It was race related. Um, and both he and the man who murdered, murdered my father and his son, all of that I've forgiven. But please, when you all hear this, forgiveness doesn't mean you forget. I'm not going to forget something that big. Forgiveness doesn't mean you're disloyal or you're weak. Yeah. You're not supporting your your own people or whoever you can call or yourself. It doesn't mean that. It means really strength. Forgiveness actually means that my energy, I know I have so much energy and I can spend it drilling down, drilling down on what did or didn't happen, or I can let release it. And I'm going to say sometimes it happens like that. And sometimes it can take decades. The key is go towards that. So, so I can take my energy and go here. And so part of my work is inclusion and diversity. And part of that is because I know from a little girl in dreams that I'm to connect people's hearts and minds all over the world. And the universe has allowed me to do a lot of that. So, so this power to forgive the unforgivable is the, is the gate, is the, is the path to freedom, your own freedom. It's the pathway to unconditional love of yourself and others. And uh, Basil Braveheart, an elder, a Lakota elder, um, right before code was, was the um, Sundance that I went to, and he was leading it. And he, we talked just for a little bit, and he just said, oh, I heard of you. You're the forgiveness lady. And I said, well, I've heard of you in many ways. <laughs> you also know a lot about forgiveness. And he said, yes, and next time, your next book, please put this in. You were right. It's the pathway to freedom. You're right. It's the pathway to unconditional love. You know, and... And it is the passcode to your own divinity, the passcode to your own divinity. So as you're breathing in that gift, realize, hey, uh, this isn't weak at all. This is about really acknowledging who and what I really am and the energy where I want to put it for what I want to create, not what I, you know, I'm still resentful, all that kind of things. So we need to heal the hurts. From generations back, because I know with my father is many generations. And again, you, you're you probably thinking a little bit, well, wait a minute, I know about forgiveness. And what this prophecy says, you've got to use it. we got to practice. This isn't something you do once. This is something you do every day, all the time. If we look at the news, and putting that in quotes, what we call the negative worthless stimulation, if we're told to hate this person, be upset with that person, uh, rage and destroy these people, because that's the only way that you're safe and going to have peace. Instead, if we bring forgiveness into our heart, forgiveness for those who have different opinions, forgiveness who don't even maybe done things that are really horrific. Yes. That's the passcode to our divinity as an individual and as the whole. Yes, that is true. That is, I mean, you're hearing me correctly. That is it. And it doesn't mean that there are some really horrible things or that what I do now, for example, put it in the concrete, what I do now with my energy is bring people together who seem to be no way could they come together. Okay. And I happen to do some of that in the corporate world. And I happen to do some of that in the community. Well, what I find is that when people begin to develop a relationship, to at least sit and listen enough, they're able to maybe not agree with everything, that's for certain, we're diverse, but to let go of that. And the big thing that we need to remember, what comes out of that forgiveness, is you have energy now to create what you want, instead of over here. I mean, Nelson Mandela was big, he forgave all those Afrikaners who were doing this, who went along with it and stuff, and he said no, the freedom that uh, we're after is the freedom not only for our people who've been suppressed and all these things that are real to come forward and be able to give our gifts and receive gifts, but also for them to be not caught in oppressor, that they have the choice and the opportunity to also be free. And that's what we want because otherwise we're still in this separateness and the separateness is killing us. It's absolutely killing us. Thank you. In fact, you, you, uh, there's a story, I believe in your book about sunflowers and your grandmother. Oh yeah. I love that story. Uh, so that this is where, um, she actually, that story is so much about this time. So when I was a little girl, I was four, my sisters were, 
uh, th two, two and a half and uh, seven, we went to grandma's house, which we love. She's a stack and she still practiced her ceremonies. And she taught us a lot about um, who we are very different than what we were learning in school. And she said, okay, tomorrow morning, Saturday, I'm going to wake you up in the dark. And every hour I'm going to make you come back to my garden for five minutes and be in silence. So we wake up the next morning, we go out to the garden, the sun comes up and she goes, and we did what my grandmother wanted because not because we were scared of her, we just loved her so much. Uh, amazing. And so we just, even a two and a half year old, quiet. And we watch the sunflowers face the sun. And then every hour we came back and you can imagine for five minutes quiet. And we noticed the sunflowers turning, but we were turning with the sunflowers facing the sun. And I remember at lunchtime, I didn't want to go lunch. I was like, I want to be with the sunflowers. It was like, you have to eat. And then we went to the, to the sunflowers. Then it became dark and she goes, okay, let's go in. And this was August, Missouri. Um, there was no moon out. It was, you know, humid, um, very dark, no moon. So we go in and we eat. And then she says, okay, okay. In her Spanish, she says, okay, let's go. Let's go back out. And we're like, oh, grandma, that's pretty dark. We're, I, we none of us said it, but I knew I was thinking it. And she takes it out. She has a flashlight, but she doesn't turn it on. We're, we go out and we realize, oh, we're holding hands. Okay, we're going outside. And she turns the light on towards our feet. And we realize we're in circle facing each other. And then she quickly turned the light gently over to her garden of the sunflowers. And the sunflowers were all facing each other. And what's great about my grandmother, oh my gosh, I know I love that, is that some people are saying I should make a children's book out of honor my grandmother. Um, that, yeah. might, that might happen. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to add that vote. And the reason that you said it today <laughs> is we're bookmarking this, we're stamping this. I think it would be good. Uh, yeah. I have some people that keep saying, yeah, we hear that. And, but she, she never debriefed. There was no debriefing. Um, yeah. This is a woman who was so brilliant and had no formal education, but so brilliant what she was teaching us. And so she just honored us. She knew we would learn it, but there are so many to this day, you know, decades and decades and decades later, given my age, I keep learning things from that. One, in this dark time, follow the sun. Every morning for 22 years, I get up and receive the seeds of light from the sun. And sometimes the moon is out too. And I receive the seeds of light from both. And it just makes, I just get centered. I don't even ask for things. I just remember in the deepest way that I'm a part of all of this. I'm a part of this. And I love this. And I want to do my part to contribute for it continuing and expanding into beauty. Um, but, and what, what happened then, it also tells you that when you those flowers are looking at each other, you might experience really dark times. But guess what? In dark times, look to each other. We are light. We are energy. Scientists will tell you that now. Yes, we know that. You know, we, we have measurement now. We can do all these different things. Yes. So... Two things people think are most human beings suffer from the fear of death and the fear of their own power. Mm. And for many of us, I mean, I don't want to have a lot of pain when I die, but I need to die. I mean, that'll, it'll happen when it happens. Um, and I know, it, and others will come in and I will continue on because I'm supporting what's happening here, even six foot under, because I'm going to be back here and the fear of our own power. And I think that, is a major, major thing. So if we can come to understand to not be afraid of our power, our ability to forgive the unforgivable, our ability to create beauty, to support the evolution of uh, areas, the regenerative to support that, oh my gosh, we have a lot of power. So it is time that we do our internal work, not, not in absence of the external, but we keep making sure is this a benefit for not only now, but seven generations? Is this a benefit? And that's what we do to know whether we go forward. But there are just many things with those sunflowers that I, you know, I just love my my grandmother and um, she's coming a lot to me lately, but uh, so she's not gone, but I do miss her physical presence. What's one other key teaching or message that she's giving you now? Because these things are never by accident. They're never by coincidence. Even you're bringing it up now. No accident, no coincidence. 
when I was a little girl, there's 121st cousins. And Sundays we would go to grandma's house. I don't know how she cooked. I mean, my aunts and uncle <laughs> helped cook, but yeah. she would hug every person who came in. And as they left, hug every person. How she had time to be with everybody and do that, it was amazing. But one of the things she used to do to me as a little girl, is I remember she would take my hand and she mm -hmm. said, Ijita, tu eres la una. And she would trace the lines on my mm -hmm. palm of my hand. Tu eres la una. And I was like, and but I saw she didn't do that to everybody. She always did something, but it wasn't that. And so my grandmother, you know, used plants. She she was a curandera. She knew how to heal with her food, yeah. uh, her just her energy, the blessings and things. And she was saying, "You're you're the one." Not that oh, you're the one and nobody else is, but hey, you have some gifts. You need to do these healings out in the world. And so when she's been coming to me, she's been. I feel her take my hand and I can tell her, um, I'm going to describe all that. Care and love yourself. It is a lie if someone sells you to be self-sacrificing about the care and love of yourself. Absolutely not. Because in doing that, then you are able to be present to help and heal others. And sometimes people will say, I can't believe you're having a session with that person. They've done horrible things. And I go, but if I have the ability to help heal them, then why wouldn't I? It comes from spirit. And so when you see people who have huge change in how they're thinking and seeing things, you're great. And, and this is happening all over. All of us, we are being called to use our gifts to remember who we are and and of course, it just brings me to take tears because it's just she's she's providing strength to me and love and and just saying, hey, that's OK. Fill up, fill up a lot and fill up a lot now because now you have a granddaughter and you're starting to realize what it means to be a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and and I've been getting um, in, in my channelings. Also, we're, we're recording this in, in February 2024. And this to me actually feels like the start of 2020 with COVID. Uh, fill up because there's a lot of energy coming your way. So fill your tanks, fill your tanks, put it in reserve right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if I could go on to give them the second gift. Please do. Yeah, so you can take your hands and you can put it on your heart. You can lower and close your eyes if you're not doing something with driving a car. And the second gift the elders put in the hoop that spirit said, remember this and you will know how to care and love yourself, care and love others, all the beings in the hoop of life. And that is the power of healing, the gift mm -hmm. of the power of healing. So take that in, breathe that into your heart and just think what a powerful thing that is. Some of what we do, we, we feel like we can just energetically, like you're saying, heal something. We just change what we're thinking about it. Others, we have others around us who help us. We have plant medicine that helps us, um, you know, all sorts of, of, of support. So what have you healed? And what was the result of that afterwards? Just let that sit with you. And what might be as you're scanning your body, even just filling your heart, what is calling forward to be healed? See, because we're never done. We're human beings. But oh my gosh, oh, I get to heal that. I used to say to my boys when I was home mm -hmm. and could fix breakfast for them, I go, oh, it's another good day to heal. And, you know, finally with my younger one, I think he was about six. He goes, you know, I don't think any of their mommies say that, that it's a good day to heal. I said, they might not, but I want you to remember it is a good day to heal. It's a very good day to heal. <laughs> so... Let's get on with that for sure to, to know that the, we know that people, and I know this for myself, so I'm not going to just say about other people. I know that until I hurt the pain of my father causing me pain for nine years, until I did my own work to heal myself, that the man, the white man who murdered my father and the white boy who came to my house to hold that energy of hatred, resentment, pain, it created like a, a wall. And so this healing process took down the wall, the forgiveness took down these, these gifts are interrelated, but focus on each one of them. Um, 
takes it down that I was able to receive. And so how I knew the healing was happening was in the strangest place. Those are very personal things in my life. In the corporate settings, when I was in there, and I'm thinking back east a lot. I don't go back east so much anymore, more west coast. Um, anyway, I put white people in circle so they could talk about their dreams and what they shared and people of color be in circle and they learn all that about each other. But as the white people sat in circles, they, they, they were saying, not all of them, but many of them would say, you know, my parents did teach me that I'm better than you who are in the outer circle listening to us. They did. Sometimes they did it with actual words. Some of the times they did it by having you absent from our lives. There are lots of different ways that they did that. But I want you to know that I forever love my parents. I'm so glad they do. They love their parents. However, they're not doing that. That they are making friends. They're having into their families. They're you know, on and on and on promoting, maybe not as fast as we want, but they're promoting them in, in places um, because they know that this separation is ridiculous. And we got to get, we got to get through that. And it causes a lot of pain and it's causing a lot of pain today, but we need to do that. And so that healing for me came about because of hearing that for almost a year, every month, multiple times. And I began having the dream where my father had died the week after my father, I won't get into what the police came and all that, but the week after my father's death, a white woman and a young white boy came to our porch. My mom opened it, not the, I think that she did it on purpose because she usually opens everything, but she left the screen door and she just looked, yes. And and this woman, this white woman, and her son is by her, and felt like he was probably around 13, something my age. And she said, Mrs. Sanchez, I had to come and see you. I had to let you know that my husband is a good man. He would never have kissed, killed your husband if he knew he's Mexican, if he knew he's native. She didn't say native, but something Indian. Um, and then she said, but you know how they are. And she started saying these horrific things about black people. And my mom, I could feel her because I was standing beside her. She was like shaking a little bit. I don't remember my mom ever shaking, really. Um, yeah. And then she screamed. I remember her scream at a stranger. She said, stop, stop. You don't even know what you're saying. You don't even know what you're doing and teaching your son. But I want you to know that I'm going to try really hard to pray for your soul, but you get off my porch. And they left. And that night, she explained to all of us, she's talked about this happening, and she said, you need to understand there are people out there who want to hurt you. So you have to be discerning and watch. However, most people are not like that. Most people are doing their healing. She used to use that too. Doing your healing. They just want to have a good life for their children, for themselves, use their gifts. Their, and so this, what happened here, you need to know that a white man killed your father, not the white race. And she never talked about it again, ever. But that was so big. But in those rooms, when I saw that, in my dreams at night, I was seeing this replayed. But I couldn't see the young boy's face. It was like I wiped it away. And over time, I had this dream. And now I could see his face. And what I came to understand is that Anita, who was in pain and hurt as a 13-year-old, big time at the murder of my father, is that I made that little boy, I assumed he's going to be just like his dad, and that the only thing he could do was hate and kill, figuratively or literally. I took away his face. I took away his humanity. And I believe it came back to me in my dreams because it was letting me see what was happening to me to do that healing work because I don't want to become what it is that I causes such great hurt and pain, you know, rippling out. It doesn't just stay there. So that, that healing process is very, very critical. And so I know to this day, if that replayed, if that young 13 year old has some of the, the wisdom I have now, and that woman, his mother did that, I would have, Asked my mom, let's open the screen door and let them come in. And that doesn't mean that, oh, it was wrong. It was okay to kill somebody. It's okay. No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying it's about your freedom. 
It's about this hoop of life and the energy we're putting in it. It's about what we're creating for those that we know we're going to die at some point. So we got to get over the fear. And But what are we leaving for those we love? And that includes some loving the ocean, loving the trees, loving the all those kinds of things. So yeah, we got to get on with the healing. Two, two brief, brief, mm-hmm. brief points. First off, and this goes back many points earlier, you invite them in and you break bread. Mm-hmm. When you break bread with another, you you cannot hold them, I don't believe, in a place of separation, in a place of you versus me, when you're having a meal together. Yeah. Well, in our house, it would probably have been tortillas because we always had tortillas, but <laughs> right, it would be that. Perfect. Not bread or tortillas. And secondly, to me, this intricate weave of energy by healing your own heart. And did, did, I, I believe everything right now is coming up from the surface. I call it shadow work. We, we can call it whatever. It's all coming up from the surface, all across humanity to be healed. It, anything that any wound, any mis, uh, uh, misgiving or injustice that was done that's been buried under the carpet is coming up now because it has to. So if you lean into that, and there were two injustices here. There were certainly the injustice, well, many injustices that took place before and and with this woman and her son on the steps. But then there was the injustice, not picking on your mom, of the energy that was thrown back at her that for many years can certainly have had an effect on her and her son, that as you're healing your heart, oh my God, the energetic ripple effect in this fabric, this weave, this tapestry of energy and of life the good that you just put out into the world. And that, what I do want to say, absolutely what you're saying is correct. And we have to be able to forgive and heal ourselves because in the midst of that pain, as human beings, we might do that, but we also come to the other. And I know from my mom that way before I did the forgiveness, no, she, she died, um, 15 years ago. She's she's still a rock star. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But she, she she was indigenous, did indigenous way, but she also said the rosary morning and night. And I know that those folks and the man who murdered my father were in her prayers because it has to be. We have to heal all of this um, because then it just keeps going on. But and once energetically you really know what it is like to be healed, even if it's just for my that, oh, I can, this can be done. This, I have the support, everything I need. Yeah. Thank you for those two things. Yes. Yes. Everything, every thought, every word, every action, all of it. We can be good medicine or we can be bad medicine and let's be good medicine. I mean, much better. Yeah. So if you want to lower or close your eyes, if you're not driving, if you're just coming in, then you can put your hands on your heart. And the third gift Spirit told these elders from all over the world to put into the hoop is the gift, the power of the gift of unity. The power of the gift of unity. Take that into the ceremony part of your heart. And as you do, you might be feeling or sensing or just even visually like all the communities you're a part of. You may may be a biological family, maybe chosen family, maybe with a pet, maybe whatever, just it, there's unity. However, to experience the highest unity that I know of as a human being, there may be others after in the other energy, unless you do the forgiveness and the healing. So you can open your eyes if you want. So business leaders often call me and say, oh, we really like the four gifts, our employee resource groups, or our, our, our executives would like to hear this and how they can use this and stuff. And they usually call me in for unity and for hope in action. And that's not wrong. You can start anywhere on these gifts. But what they do find as we're working on that, because I tell them up front, this is what's going to happen. They go, uh, I think it might be right. Maybe we have to get back to some forgiveness and some healing because this feels really big and good what we're doing, but also it feels like it's going to get, it's it's not going to grow as it should. It's not going to evolve it as it is in this state. And that's true. And that's true. But that that gift of unity is, is the wonderful one that has joy and responsibility. And um, that we've, I learned a lot growing up with my mom and my dad and 
you know, even though I had these faults and all really big ones, but I still, you have things you can learn from different people, even the people who harm you. Um, you built some muscle. I know I would never be as compassionate as I am, as empathetic, uh, as able to listen, as we're able to observe, except from some of that stuff that happened before. It doesn't mean you have to go through that, but that's what it did for me. And I'm glad I wouldn't want to change my life. I would like to not have that other people experience that, um, other beings, but those are great gifts. And they help me in terms of really experiencing what unity is. And unity, if when you were holding your heart, if you didn't see yourself that I'm just, there's nothing wrong. You start wherever you are and that's good. I would encourage you to see yourself in there because what's happening is our mind and our hearts and our spirits are out of alignment. So we don't even have unity within ourselves. So if we can't have unity within ourselves, then how the heck are we going to make it possible in a big, a sustainable, generative way outside of ourselves? So again, uh, unity is so wonderful. It's uh, Michael Beckwith said, you know, pain pushes until vision pulls. And unity is that. Unity just pulls you because it's so, oh, you know, just so wonderful to have that feeling, those experiences, to know those relationships are real and growing. And I want that for everybody. Um, so start wherever you need to in any of these three gifts I've given you so far, but know that there is even more um, that unity picture you have, go for it, go big. And my hope for you is that you will be able to do your feel, healing and forgiving the for unforgivable work as well so that it just keeps expanding. Thank you. So that's three. Mm -hmm. And so number four, lower, close your eyes and just take in a deep breath. And exhale. And as you bring in, breathe in the fourth gift, spirit told the elders to put in the hoop for all humankind is the gift of the power of hope in action. Breathe that in. And as you do that, you may be thinking of the things that you hope for and actually have happened. Um, and what are you hoping for now? And do you have some dreams? So I tell people, dream, 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 daydream, night dream, but have the hope. You can be awake dream as well, but have that hope. It is something. It is an energy source. It's not nothing. And, and when you do that, you will find that that energy source can never be taken away from you. Even in the most horrendous thing, that energy of hope in action cannot be, you can give it away. So if you've given it away, I encourage you to try out, invite you to take it back, to have hope. And you can open your eyes. So many people contact me or write me and say, oh, this last newsletter you wrote was so great. You know, you just said all these different things that are like, oh, it gives me hope. And all the things happening around the world, I didn't know. And I just, I listed maybe 40, 50 things. And they were like, oh my gosh, you know, I needed that. I guess we all need to use that energy that we have, that hope in action, you know? And there are things in, in all those viewers' life that they didn't have it at that time. They didn't experience it at that time, but they could see it. Like a four-year-old, I absolutely knew that when I grew up, I was going to be one of many on this earth who were connecting hearts and minds of people. I didn't have any language for it in kindergarten. I just put it like that. And, but as I got older, lo and behold, you know, it happens, you know, very young already at 23, I'm working internationally. I'm in Singapore, bringing hearts and minds together in Middle East, bringing hearts and minds together within people in themselves, all of these things. And then from there, it went into global corporations bringing together the hearts and minds of people who saw themselves as enemy and yet are, are working in the same company that want to have it really be a benefit for their families and, and future, you know, strength of all of this. And it, this hope in action is something. I, I think you probably have a better way to even say that because it is about energy, that hope. Uh, I'm sitting right here. I'm going to digress just a little bit. I'm sitting right here. I probably don't have the picture. Um, in this room, 
And in this room, my youngest son, who's now 27, was um, 15, 18 months old. And we had a blessing way. And Eddie Box, um, a Ute elder, amazing. He was head of Sundance for like 30 plus years. He came up and he did this ceremony with my son. And my, I took the shirt off my little boy and he opened this thing and my son pushed his hand away and put his fingers in the, in the sacred dirt and then began making these things on his, and you're going 18 months old. He wasn't just like, he was being very, you got it. And then, and then uh, he was done and then Eddie closed up the box and then he, he, I put Nico down and he goes to sing in the circle and to, to um, I think he was playing the flute for a little bit. Then he stopped and he was just chanting. And all of a sudden in the 13 of around this little Nicholas is dancing, not like an 18 month old. He was doing these different moves and things and, and addicts just smiling and uh, chanting. And I could hear my older son who was uh, about seven at the time. And he goes, how does he know how to do that? And I could hear Eddie say, because the elders are with them, the ancestors are with them, and they're with you too. You only need to ask, and sometimes you don't even need to do that, but, and to get the, just ask, it's with you. And so that's how he knows. And so that's what I'm saying is that you, the hope, you all, something you dreamt about, and then it came true, or you even thought about someone and then all of a sudden they call, you know, this energy that we have for hope into the future, sometimes a very close present though, uh, you can, you can, it's an energy source. So use that hope in action. It's just great. And thank you for letting me share that about my son. He just left, he, he's take, doing a master's in Taiwan in mechanical engineering. And he just went back after holiday, it was Chinese new year. And, um, so I, I'm thinking about him and just that the ancestors are with him and he loves it there. He's just all the people, but it was weird being here, not having Mandarin <laughs> and he doesn't speak a word, but his school, thank God it's in English. Anyway. Well, th yeah. there's, there, there's so many connections here because I've had my Mandarin speaking grand, uh, 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 Hannah Bear's uh, grandparents here oh, for the good. last two weeks. And now we're flying back to New Jersey in two days to celebrate Chinese New Year with our Chinese and Taiwanese family. Yeah, see, there is there's connection. The there's a connection. There, there is connection. And and you just, it wasn't a digression because yes. I would have had to ask you, um, how do we find hope when there doesn't appear to be anyone, uh, hope anywhere? And you just said, go to your elders, go to your ancestors. They're always with you. They're always doing a dance. They've always got your back. They are always, there. always there. there. And dream, dream, dream. Yes. Get that mind out of the way that can sometimes lie to us and just go to sleep. And even if, if those of you who don't know how to dream, I get lots of people like that. They say, just before you go to bed, be gentle with yourself. Just say, hey, there's something that could come through dreaming, whatever it is. Could be just beauty, could be memory, whatever. Let it happen. And so many of them go, wow, it, it didn't take that long. You know, you, usually the longest is a couple of months doing it, but some is just like less than a week. And then all of a sudden, my gosh, I... I, they just didn't remember their dreams, I think is what happened, because we have that ability. Thank you. So there are two things that are pulling in my heart that we need to discuss. And and they are eagle, they don't necessarily go together, but eagles and the Oshawa. So maybe we start with the eagles and start with this connection to nature and start with, hmm, let's go real briefly to your dissertation even. Uh, I have neighbors who walk this road. I'm in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. And they go, when they read the book, they're like, is that true? Did you just, I said, yes. Um, but where I live, the eagles, um, I think it must be a path for them because we get golden and bald. But anyway, when I was giving my dissertation, I came down to the very end. I drew the, drew the writing. I painted everything in the house I could. And then I had no more to paint. So I needed to do this. And then I just got mad. I got full of myself. So I went out my my back door, which is all glass back there. And I sort of screamed. I know my mom and my grandma was probably there going, oh my gosh. And I'm screaming like, why do I have to do this? I'm already doing good medicine in the world. I don't need a PhD. Why? I don't want to. I'm not a writer, blah, 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 blah. And 
after I got through screaming, got a little hoarse, I closed the door, but it's all glass. And an eagle flew by. I said, okay, every morning I get up and I, I go to the bathroom and then I look outside because it's beautiful, the Continental Divide, even in the dark or in the light, either, it's beautiful. And, um, and if an eagle comes by, then all right. Well, the next three and a half months, every morning when I went out, an eagle flew, flew by, sometimes two. But the hardest part, I'll tell you, is, and I would, the commitment was I would write for three hours. And that could be falling asleep on the desk. It could be actually right. Mm -hmm. Just I had to be there. And the worst part was when I'd come up and I'd fix my breakfast and sit down and another darn eagle would fly by. And I, <laughs> okay, I got to go down for another three hours. But in three and a half months, I got it written. And they helped me. So all of these are relatives. All of them. Uh, you know, when I say ancestors, I know most people think of the two-legged, and they are. They're they're very special. They're unique in terms of being two-legged. But so are all the others in terms of what they provide us. So I love the eagles. I'm told I carry eagle energy, but I just love them. And yeah, I listen to them. How important is it? Uh, I'm so leading the witness here. Please forgive me. How important is it for us to reestablish our connection with nature at this time? When we look at climate change, when we look at the health of people, part of it is because they don't have clean air to breathe. All this uh, medical stuff, all these things are connected. We are nature. We know we're made up of the minerals, water, all of that. So when we can be grateful for that and mm -hmm. protect that, that's important. And right now we need that desperately because like I said, 80% of the most biodiverse lands now are lands that indigenous people are on. And many of them are working so hard, if not all of them are working really hard to make sure that it doesn't get decimated. And if it does, all the scientists are saying, well, that's this. And we're not going there because we know that Mother Earth, Grandmother Earth, whatever, Father, Son, whatever language you want to use, we're part of the children, just like the trees are part of the children. You know, the dogs are part of the children, all of this. And they, and we are meant to evolve. So this reconnection to nature, the remembering, is very critical. So whether you have to go back to really early, just liking to put walk on the sand or play in the sand, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Just remembering that. So that, again, so that when we make decisions, our actions will be remembering it has implications because we are all connected. I have I have flutes in this house. Oh, I'm flute. I have flute. Um, I have drums. I have many, many drums of all different shapes and sizes. And it seems important. The drum beat to me is the heartbeat of the earth. It seems important that we bring we bring beauty, we bring music, we bring beats back in to remember who and what we are. Yeah, I, I agree that. And when I was little, sometimes when we'd go to powwows and things, I was like, I was just a little scared of the drum. And I realized what it was because I wasn't telling my secret about the bad things that were happening. So, and I couldn't hide from the drum. I can't hide from the heartbeat. And so, yes, we need to do that. And also know just as important as the heartbeat is that bird sound, is the sound of the aspen tree leaves moving. All of that is part of what can pull us. And so that great diversity that exists everywhere is really connect to that place, really connect. And if you're way far away from where you're born, be sure to still open up to the connection from there and learn about where you are and the first peoples there. And do your dance, sing your song, be in ceremony and be in community. Thank you. I think you shared a story with me a long time ago, and it still is a tug on my heart. I, I have to go with you to the Amazon one of these times. I have yes. to. I have to. It's, it's, it's a non-negotiable. Yeah. Um, I think you stare, shared a story of the Ashuar people uh, in the Amazon that they woke up or they wake up and they ask the kids about their dreams and they base what they do as a people based on what the kids uh, the kids are sharing with them. Is this correct? What, what You got most of it correct. So it is true. <laughs> the Ashrar 
they're not a dream culture, but they know that lots of this spiritual, this other realm is part of what's happening right now. So they'll wake up before dark. The women will make this tea. It's just tea. And, mm -hmm. and then everybody will wake up and they start with the youngest and anyone who has a, a dream, they'll share it. Sometimes I, I, in my dream, I saw this place on the river and there were three rocks, whatever it is, and share up to the elder all the way through. And then based on all of that, yeah. decide what they're going to do that day. And you talk, when I take people, they go, talk about family. We don't understand unity, community. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And everybody is acknowledged. Anything they saw is like, oh, that's ridiculous. No, it's like, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of that? How will that be of service to you, all of us, all, all the nature around us that you, yeah, you, so you got it. You got it. That happens. And I love taking people to that. It's just so fun. Thank you. On that note, and in a minute, I, I have got to introduce you to someone special. I'm going to have to hop off camera in a second and, and hop back on. But um, you have something special coming up this spring. Can you share what that is and how people can find out about it? Well, yes, you can always go to anita-sanchez.com, anita, A-N-I-T-A, sanchez.com. Um, and you can learn about all the different things I'm doing, both in, in the communities and business and stuff. But I'm going to be starting, uh, I'll be a new podcast host. Probably the, it'll start at the end of March. I'm just doing some interviews. Um, and it'll be a podcast on the Be Here Now Network. And it will be called Sacred Gifts, Wisdom from the Hoop of Life. And I'll be interviewing Indigenous elders and, of course, learning all the messages that we're hearing from the earth and all those things. So, um, yes, that's that's a thing coming up. And do you have a, a a journey, a retreat, an event, something coming up as well? Yes, I do. I have in May, May 15th through 27th, uh, I'm going to be taking a group down to the Amazon. There are some slots left. So if you are interested, then again, get a hold of me through uh, anita-sanchez.com. And I will give you the information. And it's just, it's, it's, we call it a journey because it's not a, it's not a vacation, although you vacate, vacate your current reality. It is a journey. It's really life giving. So, yes. And I have one of the good thing I forgot to tell you about, which is yes, yes, yes. in September, I have an, my eighth book coming out. And the book is, uh, yeah, Kaleidoscope Mind. Uh, I can't remember the tagline, but it's something like doing, getting more done by doing less. And so it's again, walking that whole path of actually using some of these gifts, but walking that path. So that way we can release hurts and pains and trauma and, and, and get more done when we're trying not to just, you know, be in this scattered um, chaos uh, that doesn't feel purposeful. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about that book. I'm, I'm the first author. There, it's a group of us who've been doing this work for some time. And I will have to have you back on at that time. If you want to come back on that. Yeah, is. no, I love talking to you. It's great. So it, it's great. So I'm going to get somebody special in just a moment. Everybody's special, but I'm going to get a special someone. However, you mentioned early on, you said grandmother would never want us to forget who we are. Who are we, according to your grandmother? We are energy. We're love. We're care. We're part of everything. We're not separate. I don't have any other language to say, but that's what she would say. You know, they, she would always, and my grandpa and uncle would always put their hands in a hoop and see this hoop is not up down. It's, it's flat. And they would say, you know, everyone, people, nature, earth, spirit, all of this is one knows higher, no lower. And so who we are, when we remember that, then we remember to care for it. Because who wants to use a machine gun on their foot? When well, we should use a machine gun anyway. But I use that to be dramatic because we that's we got to get understanding who we are. And part of that is remembering your ancestors, remembering who you are, dreaming, healing, all of these gifts. See, I am very bullish about the future. And this sounds to me um, not Pollyannish. And I'm, I've, I've got to reread what the origin of the word Pollyannish <laughs> even is. But this sounds beautiful. And I think it is bringing this beauty, bringing this remembrance back that actually takes us through, well, we can call this a dark night of the soul for humanity, but there's always the dawn after the dark night. There is. And I, I hope um, 
you know, I know many people don't have indigenous people in their life um, that are connected to a tribe. However, I would like you to consider thinking about how they are all around the world protecting these nature that re, that is gives us life and and rather than see them as separate is like thank them do what you can to help because this is not just about them they know they're not only doing this for their people their culture the land they love they know from spirit from their ceremonies that this is really critical to earth and so the amazon is one of a number of places but definitely the primary forests need to be protected um Otherwise, all that carbon, all, all sorts of weather changes will happen even worse than we're experiencing. So I don't say that to scare you. I say instead that unity, that family, knowing who you are and what you are, gosh, I get to do this, you know, and, and that that's, can't get better than that. This again might be a naive question, but there's let let's say that you're boy, you're here, you're in Florida, you're in New York, you're in wherever, and you say, I want to make an actual connection, not the virtual connection, an actual connection. Are there groups? Are there events? Are there things that we can do to remind ourselves by bringing? Man, I can remember my first drum circle, or remember my first ceremony, and my first powwow, and on and on it goes, and you're changed forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So every anywhere you are, you can look up who are who you can. I mean, now we have those little technologies. So we can just, you know, local groups, local tribes, blah, blah, blah. And the tribes will have some people say, oh, but I don't want to intrude. And they're not going to invite you to something if they don't want you there. But powwows and other things, drumming, talking circles, any of those you, you hear about those, then go. And um, and no, you're going to be in a little different place, but it's it's great. And you can start developing those relationships. It took me four years going to the Amazon every year to finally have the local people I saw every year. I've seen their kids grow um, where when our group was coming, I could hear. Anita's coming. Anita. Oh. And I was like, I just started crying. And our guide started crying because I usually call her a cookie. And she went. They, they put you in, they put you in there. So, you know, all things take different amounts of time, but knowing I'm connected. You want to hear something really cool? It's real fast. I know. Yes. Done. It, during COVID, I finally did the 23 of me. And I have a good friend who's a cultural anthropologist. So she does all the numbers. You get sort of a basic thing, but there are a lot of pages of numbers behind that she, you can work. So I did come out. I'm I'm half indigenous. I, I kind of knew that. I thought it was all Nawa. Uh, Aztec, but it turns out it's Toltec as well. And she told me to sit down. She did a 50 PowerPoint slide. Significant part of that indigenous is from the Amazon. She said, I can't tell you which tribe, but you have the marker. You're from, and I go, I have no stories of that. And yet the first time I went there in 2007, I just knew that I needed to come back. And listen, I wouldn't survive there except for these folks because they know they're so connected to their part of nature. They don't talk about themselves separate. But I then I go, oh my gosh, the ancestors are telling me something. That's yeah. Who am who am I? Ooga booga. So <laughs> the real real fast add to this is is years ago I went down to a uh, uh, I was invited to a Nobel Peace Prize summit down uh, in um, oh my gosh in the Yucatan. Mm -hmm. the, the, the city is Merida. Merida, yeah. And and I went I went across to check out the cenotes. Yes. And I went out uh, to check out the Mayan, I hate this term, ruins in yeah. quotes. There's nothing that's ruined about no. it. But I had been having these dreams all growing up and all until I went there. I don't think, I don't know if I've had the dream since of swimming in these giant water holes and popping out in the ocean. Yeah. And I went to the cenotes and I'm like, these are my dreams. And I went and sat on top of a Mayan temple that I, I was given permission to sit on top of. And I'm like, I've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> it was such, but we all have. It was such an ooga booga moment. Yeah. We all are indigenous. We all have had many lifetimes here. This is not, it, it's a miracle. It's a blessing. It's amazing. Yes. Hold that thought for one second. Oh, hi. You're half awake right now. Oh, you just got I, I, Oh, yeah. Hi, <laughs> baby. Oh, you're so gorgeous. And what's your name? What's your name? Hanna Bear. Hanna so, Bear. So let me get it. Uh, I don't know what it'll do, the recording, if I switch the sound here. 
but she, Anita is saying hi to you right now. Hi. Do you want to say hi back? Hi. Yes, oh, it gave me a little oh, smile oh, there. Oh, I love that. Oh, how wonderful. And she, oh, she is very beautiful, tired. Beautiful, cute. Oh, and she's yeah. a traveler. She's been traveling with you. Guys. So she's so she, know that. She, she has been traveling. She'll, she'll travel a little bit more this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy and mommy you've been traveling with. And uh, uh, yeah. So there's a dream come true. What's she saying? Did she say something? I want to say, say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing, Hannah Bear. Yeah. Should I let you go back to, to lunch with mommy there? <laughs> Well, when I met you four years ago and your wife, and we spent a lot of time eating together and talking and stuff, you all said, oh, we want we want to bring a life in the world. We want a baby. We want to share. And then I saw on your Facebook or somewhere, I don't know, maybe some of, one of your links, I saw this little girl and I was like, oh, yay. See, dreams come true. <laughs> yes. So any last words you want to share with people, Anita? Thank you for being here. You are all my precious relations, even if I never see you. And just remember, we do nothing alone. If we could all wake up and just really know that, then we can give gratitude for all that it is. Even when it looks like in the physical, we don't have much, we have so much support. So thank you. You're here for a reason. And that, of course, changes. You just flipped the, and expressed the gene and expressed the energetic pattern inside of you of unity, of oneness, of forgiveness, of healing, of this giant hoop of life, of all of it. Thank you so much, Anita. This has been so beautiful. I, uh, the, the only way I can describe it when I get around indigenous wisdom, forgive me, is I fan swoon. Because <laughs> these are the most, to me, the most important messages. They're what we need to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Put in practice. That's good. And you do. Thank you. Thank you. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun. Oh my God. Dive into the four sacred gifts today and above and beyond all else shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Anita. <laughs> uh, this was another one of those interviews that I feel we all needed and we all needed right now. How does it get any better than this? Well, if you're looking for a daily dose of inspirational goodness, simply go to daily woohoo. That's that link down below dailywoohoo.com and I'll help bring your energy up, 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 up and way up each and every day. That's dailywoohoo.com. If you want to join a community, a hoop of like-minded souls as we're going through this journey together and bringing each other up and learn the most amazing words of wisdom, come to, well, the link is down below, the School of Mystics. We get together four Wednesdays each month, live via Zoom or virtually or recorded, whichever way you want. And we help shift your energy to a higher plane, to a higher state, to a place where it stays there for good. That's uh, School of Mystics, that link down below. If you want to communicate with your elders, with your ancestors, with your loved ones on the other side of the veil, live classes with me, plus recordings, go to Automatic Writing, another link down below, automaticwriting.com. Here's the link to the next amazing show. Love you so, so much. Keep on shining bright. Woohoo! Lots of love, and how does it get any better than this? Woohoo! See ya.